Hello everyone and welcome to uh, Definition of Done. So uh, there was a, a request for something on like uh, time management. This is kind of obliquely re related to that. It'll help, um, but if it doesn't seem like it's immediately addressing that, like bear with me for a sec. So um, overriding message that I want you to take away from this lesson is that starting feels fast, finishing is fast. This is a, a like just a weird uh, aspect of psychology that uh, when you feel like you're behind on something or you feel like you're in a hurry, you want to start everything. Um, and so what you end up doing is you go, okay, so I'm going to start a little bit of this and uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of this and I'm going to be I'm going to multitask these things. Problem is multitasking is bullshit. It does not exist. Um, what you have is rapid serial uh, tasking and context switching. So what this actually turns into is I'm doing a little bit of this and then I context switch over to this and then I context switch back to this and then I context switch back to this and then I context switch back to another thing and then back to my first thing and then I start this other thing over here and then I context switch back to that one and then I context switch back over here and then I context switch back over there. So we can't actually pile these things up on top of each other. What we can do is do them one at a time and jump back and forth. Who can tell me what the problem with this uh, serial single tasking thing is? Nothing gets done. Uh, that's for sure. Why? Because you're starting, and this is like the story of my life, you start something that you don't finish, and then you have to get back into it, and every single time, it's you're, not, you're like starting from scratch again. Yes! Getting back into it. That's the problem. And you mentioned, like, it feels like uh, you're starting all over again because every time, and we've talked about this a bunch, you have to reestablish context. As you jump back to these things, you go, hang on, where was I? Uh, okay, cool. I'm going to work on this. Okay, where, where was I? Uh, okay, uh, where was I? So let's say, hypothetical, that um, there were no costs to context switching on this. Then it still wouldn't be any faster. than doing that. We don't actually save any time when we do this. If that's how long those tasks take, it still takes the same amount of time stacking them up like that. And the reality is we pay a huge cost every time we have to context switch. So our main goal shouldn't be constant utilization. Like the temptation to do this comes from like, uh, I'm blocked on this. I'm waiting for uh, like an evaluation to come back. I'm, um, I, I, need, I need more info. I need to research a board, uh, those kinds of, that, that's what like the temptation to do this comes from. But since context switching is so expensive, it would be better for us to spend less time context switching, minimize the number of times that we have to do that. So 
Part of that comes from minimizing what we call whip. Work in progress. We want to be working on as few things as we can get away with. So even better than this, just that. Or if we can get away with it, just that. And then when we get here, what we find is that, oh, now I have a choice about whether or not blue should come next, and then red, and then yellow. Or maybe by the time I'm done with that, something's changed. It makes more sense to do yellow first. But this feels fast. This is fast. And way less stress on yourself. Now, the thing that you have to push back against is that when you do this, I don't know, sometimes you do have to wait. That's called slack in the business. Slack looks like this. So that's either between those, or it might be something like, um, we gotta take a break, go for a walk. Is that why the messaging program that some tech companies use is called Slack? Um, I actually don't know why uh, Stuart Butterfield named it that. Um, but it's possible. Slack's an old concept. It goes back to the 70s. Um, but yeah, like, you will feel, uh, like, if, uh, assuming you were raised in our culture, you'll probably feel bad about Slack. Ah, I'm not being busy enough. And so then to combat that, you make it so much worse by starting a bunch of new work in progress. So this is part of the rewiring that we need to do with ourselves is be okay with some slack and try to minimize the amount of time that we spend changing context. Ask me some questions about that. So when you're talking about slack, um, because I just want to make sure that, I, mm -hmm. that my understanding is clear. Because when, when you say slack, to me, that's, that's like, cut me some slack, you know, like, relax, chill. Is that, like, what you're trying to say, or is that, or, no. like, what is? It's. Okay, that's slack. That's no slack. Oh. Got it. Okay, so you're talking about tension then. Yes. Got so it. Okay. The opposite of having slack is uh, constant utilization, always being busy. We don't always want to be busy. We want to have some slack. Got it. So, like, slack is this in here. Another way to think of slack. Um, uh, another word for slack is uh, headroom. So if this is your total capacity and this is your current utilization, the gap above that is headroom or slack. So it's unused capacity. So why don't we want to go at 100% utilization all the time? Because we'll burn out. Because you'll burn out. What happens when you uh, uh, push an en engine as much RPMs as it can go all the time? Blows Burn up. Blows up. Burns out. You play a speaker as loud as it can go, just a square wave all the time. Burns out. There is not a single thing that works best at 100% utilization. Want to have some headroom. And the reason uh, for that 
is that our work is variable. We need to be able to burst up to here, up to here. So if we can't do that, if we're at 100% utilization all the time, those bursts take us past capacity. You can't do more than you can do. And in fact, there's a particular phenomenon that happens when you get in this situation where you can't get anything done. Nothing comes through the system anymore. That feels like me with Gilded Rose. <laughs> happens all the time. Um, there's even, th like, this is one of the few things in agility that there's actually a mathematical proof, proof for. It's called Little's Law. It is deceptively simple. That's Little, Little's Law right there. And the um, it, it measures how long you can respond to things um, uh, given like random arrival. So think like uh, bank tellers. So like given like a, a steady flow of customers coming in, how long will they wait? And what's kind of interesting about uh, Little's Law is that you can prove that at some point, like it doesn't just slow down as more people come in, it stops. Like, you're not able to get anybody through the system anymore past the threshold. That's what happens with us too, when we don't have Slack. So this is the hyper counterintuitive part that has to do with time management. If you are, if you have no Slack in your system and your constant, constant utilization, how do you get faster? Share. You can't. <laughs> okay, so this is no output. How do we get some output? Through work. Nope. I mean, output is through work. I to walk away. Do less shit! <laughs> if you're maxed out, that's the problem. You don't push more. Don't add more stuff. You have to take some stuff out. And remember, that's not doing less. That's getting stuff through the system. The problem is equating utilization with output. If you're here, that's 100% utilization. You're hustling. You're staying busy. There's no output, though. I don't give a shit about your utilization. I care about your output. So if we're here and there's no output, that gives us output. It's counterintuitive though. Feels like you're doing less. Really, you're just not running the engine at 100% anymore. And so now we can actually get somewhere. Um. The breaks, the walks, the getting good sleep, taking care of yourself, food, exercise, all that kind of stuff. You need space for that. You need space for meditation. You need space for not looking at screens. Sleep? sleep. Are we allowed to sleep? It's not busy, 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 busy. Can you present this to the grown-ups at board as a case for a break? Because oh, I feel like believe that's the me, best I asked for ever one for a break. Um, I uh, I absolutely requested one. That's a tough sell. It does. I mean, like it feels like you can't escape, even though you can walk away. But it feels like it can't escape, you know, and then it becomes overwhelming. Totally. But, and we're, again, we're not trying to escape, and we're not trying to do nothing. We're trying to lower our utilization. 
No, I just meant like good sleep is interrupted. Oh, like, oh shit, I know what I did, you know, type thing. <laughs> um, that's a different problem. But uh, one that like meditation in particular helps a lot with and journaling, those two. Um, but if we want to go fast, we got to lower our utilization and we got to put some slack into the system. So if you feel like you're not getting anything done, hmm, maybe take a look at this utilization. Are you working too hard? If you're working too hard, so, output is lower. So what do you recommend? Because we're like at this point of like, okay, we have to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. We have like seven weeks left yeah. after this. Um, so, and, and I myself, I mean, I don't feel, I was feeling okay. And then now I feel like I'm, oh, oh crap, I'm behind now. So sure. how do we... I understand we have to like the utilization we need slack, but then at the same time, how do I make sure that I'm getting enough done Sure. to make sure I'm not going to, you know, get to the end and like, Oh, you didn't get enough done or you're not going to make it to totally. week 16. Um, so some things that we can use for that. Um, one is here's a, here's a big vocab word, locus of control. Anyone want to take a shot at giving me a definition of locus of control? The locus of control is going to be uh, how you perceive your control over your actions or your life. So there's outside locus of control, such mm -hmm. as the weather. There's inside locus of control, such as your response to the weather. Ding, 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 ding. Great definition. So uh, locus of control is uh, internal stuff, external stuff. External stuff, we don't control. And so there's actually some like, maybe counterintuitive things that are outside of your locus of control. Um, for example, completing the course. Yeah, you don't control that. I control that. Um, you're, an, you're an ingredient in that, but you don't control it. Whether or not you pass a particular exercise, that's not in your locus of control. That's my locus of control. Things that are in your locus of control is I'm going to submit uh, five things today. If I'm stuck on something for more than 10 minutes, I'm going to ask a question. That is inside of your locus of control. And so what we focus, like when you're getting overwhelmed, part of it is uh, just feeling like all this stuff that's outside of your control is getting you down. So... Ignore it. It's outside of your control. What is inside of your control is things that reliably produce the kinds of output that you're looking for. Maybe it won't this time, maybe it won't every time, but it will on average. And if it's not, that's another conversation we have. We pick a different strategy. But some things that are inside of all of your locus of control that uh, can help get things done and get away from this like, ah, I'm not doing enough is things like number of submissions. You control that. That's in your locus of control, not mine. They might all get kicked back. That's outside of your locus of control. But the number that you throw out there, you control that. So maybe you go, I'm going to call it a good day if I get 15 things submitted. I don't know what the number should be. Five, 50. Start with a low number and see how it feels. It might be number of minutes working before a break. Uh, you can't control whether or not you're tired you can control whether or not you're taking breaks. So things like Pomodoro tire timers, awesome for that. That's inside of your locus of control. Things like how long to struggle 
solo. Whether or not you spend an entire day, an entire week without asking for help, that's inside of your locus of control. Whether or not you figure out the problem, that's not inside your locus of control. So don't worry about it. So part of the cure for like feeling like, ah, I'm not doing enough. Focus on the things that are inside of your locus of control. All right, like, let's get real. I've worked with all of you now for almost nine weeks. All of you are capable of this. Like I am 100% convinced of that. You can have whatever career you want to have as a software developer, every single one of you. You can graduate the program in 16 weeks. I am absolutely convinced of that. And hey, what do you know? Uh, both of those things, at least to some degree, are inside of my locus of control. Um, but the thing that will stop that from happening is worrying too much about stuff that's outside of your control and letting that distract you from stuff that is inside of your control. So you come up with some reasonable metrics for this. Whatever is the thing that's holding you back, whatever you're getting uh, like stuck on, find some stuff that you can measure an effect on that. Focus on that instead. The results will happen. If you're doing these things reliably, like the stuff that's outside of your locus of control will take care of itself. If you're paralyzed because you're at 100% utilization and like worried about getting kicked out of the program or like just some shit like that, then you get distracted from this. Ask me some questions. What's on your mind? So much easier said than done. Oh, 100%. So a thing that uh, is a great step to implementing this, I mean, hell, just start with these three. Set a target for yourself. I will submit at least 10 things today, even if they're wrong. I'm just going to get 10 things out there. Maybe I do more than that. Eh, but if I've done 10, if I've done 15, if I've done 20, whatever your target is, if I've done that, I can feel good about the amount of things that I submitted. And like, I'd write that down. Put it on a whiteboard. Put it on a sticky note. So that when you are tempted to go into like panic mode, it's like, it's like calm you giving panic you advice and go, ah, okay. I'm spiraling. I'm going to give myself some advice. 15 submissions. That's concrete. That's tangible. And old man Coberly's shitty red pen can't take that away from me. <laughs> Just to make sure that, like, I'm understanding, but the um, work in progress, so don't, so, like, if I'm working on Gilded Rose, I, sure. I was doing something where I was, like, maybe, like, in the morning, I would work through content, and mm -hmm. then in the afternoons, I'd work on, like, a project. Sure. I don't have a problem with that. So, and, like, if it's just those two things, that's actually relatively low work in progress. Um, so that's two things. You're working on Gilded Rose, you're doing some reading. That's okay. Um, I think what happens uh, when, when like a uh, whip starts going up is you, uh, you're working on a project, you're working on some reading stuff, and then you start some other reading stuff, and I don't really get that, and I, I read another thing, and I read another thing, and I read, uh, 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 hold on. That's when that starts spiraling and turning into a lot of whip. Or you're halfway through Gilded Rose, and you go, uh, actually, I'm gonna start the TypeScript project too, and actually, I'm also gonna go back to a DOM calculator. Because, like, since you don't feel like you're getting enough done, you start starting things to feel, to, like, create the illusion of speed, but you're just piling up stuff. But, no, I actually think it's a, a super good strategy to split your day like that and, like, all right, I'm going to crank on, like, some of the longer-term stuff uh, in the morning. I'm going to read stuff in the afternoon. Totally reasonable way to approach this. But that's still ultimately a pretty low whip. It's, like, two things. Hey, Kyle, I can tell you <clears throat> earlier when we were doing stuff with, with DRL me, 
would be a do a bunch of submissions, mm-hmm. move over to a project for a while, mm-hmm. work on it, go to take a break, come back. You you responded a yeah. bunch of X's. Oh, okay. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna bang those out real quick. Oh wow. Um, okay. I, I submit a couple more. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my project. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh wait. Oh, Kyle responded. Next thing I know, I'm like, I'm in a loop of stuff. Keep going back and forth, back and forth. And I never actually just stuck with one thing. I was jumping yeah. back and forth. And now I'll do it where I tell myself, if I've submitted a bunch of stuff like to you, I don't look at it again until I know I'm I'm done with whatever I planned. And then yes. if I like maybe before maybe before I'm about to go to bed, I'll, I'll do a quick check. I'm like, oh wait, there's a couple more things here. I might try to knock them out and be like, okay, I know what I'm gonna do first thing tomorrow morning, is knock those out. But I, I had to force myself to not go check because every time I saw a new red X come in, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go back and fix that. Sure. Now I've considered taking away the little toast notification um, because if like you just chase that every single time you get it back, that's a real good way to end up doing this. And from experience, don't check for the X's before you go to bed because then you think about it all night long. Uh, oh, my it. God, you work while you sleep, and it's just, oh, my God, you're exhausted. And you're like, why is this not working today? It worked in my dreams. Yes. <laughs> so don't check the X's before going to bed. <laughs> or, or you just don't go to bed. Uh, That's it. <laughs> here's, a, here's another thing that, like, runs very, very anti-cultural to like how all of us were probably raised. Another way to finish something is to quit. So uh, a good example of that is, uh, all right, I'm gonna look at Gilded Rose for a little bit. I'm gonna work on it for like half an hour. Eh, I don't know enough for this. Quit, delete the repo, go back and read some other stuff. That's not work in progress because it's not in progress. That's completely valid. And I think that, like, there's a temptation is like, oh, no, I'll just hold on to it. All right, well, now you're, like, reestablishing context when you come back to it. You might have newer, better ideas. And remember, up here is the hard part. Like, if you know, uh, if you already have figured out Gilded Rose, it takes you, like, 20 minutes to code the solution. Figuring it out in the first place, that's the hard part. Like, I don't think I've seen a Gilded Rose solution yet that's, like, more than 100 lines of code. You could type 100 lines of code, no problem. Up here, that's the difficulty. So, like, I want you to use things like those big projects. I want you to look at, uh, look at them ahead of time. Use that to help guide where you're putting your effort. What parts of this look hard? What kinds of parts of the curriculum do you want to spend more time on? Totally reasonable, but you can keep your whip lower by just taking something out. Make it not in progress anymore. You'd be surprised what wonders that does for your mood also. The perfectionist out here. And concerning the whole locus of control thing, when you got flabbergasted, I highly recommend reading this little book called The Art of Not Giving a Shit. Love it. Or um, the Ecbatidas Handbook, which is also stupid handy for getting yourself out of that. Yeah, there it is, man. The Art of Not Giving a Shit. Modern day stoicism. It's great. Um, I'm a I'm a like a hardcore stoicism dork. Um, I like. I just recommend that philosophy to anybody. Um, all of like like Ryan Holiday is kind of like the the new uh, Stoic champion. Any of his stuff, uh, but I do a I do a Stoic reading every single morning. It does a lot to like quiet that voice. Always keep Epictetus's handbook nearby. Totally. Always. Or Meditations by Marcus Aurelius is another good one. And the Seneca Younger. Yeah. The locus of control has been a thing for a long time. Like the the prayer of serenity is all about that. 100%. These are old ideas. These are like thousands of years old. I think um, the setting small goals for yourself is important. I, I, I haven't been doing that. And I'm not going to lie to you. I, 
I panic and then I go back and like reread the same shit that I just read. Yep. So I think maybe setting those goals and just like focusing on one thing at a time is going to be beneficial. Beautiful. I'll give you another idea that that just reminded me of. Um, doorbells. So a doorbell is something you can easily identify um, that gives you a hint that something is happening. One of those for me that Bryce just reminded me of is if I'm reading something and I realize I just reread the thing that I uh, read, like I, I read a paragraph and then I absentmindedly end up reading that paragraph a second time, doorbell. That means my brain isn't working very well anymore. That means go to sleep. That means take a walk. That means something. But that is a doorbell that I am wasting my time reading at that point. Maybe I just need five minutes. Maybe I need to eat. Who knows what the door, who knows what, who's at the door? But that is a doorbell that you're in trouble. Another doorbell is, um, oh no, this test didn't pass. What if I just run it again without changing anything? <laughs> That's a doorbell. It means you're too tired. Answer the door. Learn what your doorbells are. You might have a particular thought loop that starts and you get anxious. And like for people who are doing career changer kind of stuff, a lot of, the, a lot of times that's like, um, uh, see, I told you, uh, you, you can career change. You can't be a software engineer. You're not smart enough for this. You didn't even do well in math in high school. Um, you might have like that voice, doorbell. That means that you're getting frustrated. That means that um, you need to spend some time like handling your emotions. I think guys in particular like uh, culturally have a difficult time with this one. Cannot ignore your emotions. Your emotions are also never wrong. It's not possible to have a wrong emotion. You have like a stimulus that causes the, uh, the emotion. That's just is, it's not wrong. You have an emotional response. That's also not wrong. It can't be. It's biological. It just happens to you. In between those two things is a filter. Filter between the stimulus and your emotional response. So since you can't control that emotional response, what you can, going back to locus of control, do is take a look at that filter. Go, why am I feeling that way? What filter caused me to have that emotion from that stimulus? Weird. I had a, uh, uh, an outstanding coach once who talked me through uh, a big part of this idea, which is getting bigger than yourself. So if that's you, you need to get bigger than you so that you can look at you. So you can go, huh, why did little old me have that emotional response to getting a red X? What's going on there? What is that filter? And very gently look at it. It's fear that I'm not gonna make it. It's fear that I'm gonna make it and then on my first day in the job, I'm just gonna get laughed out of the room. And then big you can be a lot more analytical about that than like little you can. Big you can go, well, given that everyone from Old Man Coberly to Kelly to Saja to every single person I've talked to said that that wasn't going to be the case, I don't know. Why is, why is little me freaking out about this so hard? And what happens nine times out of ten is acknowledging that emotion like releases its control. Anytime I'm in a thought loop, that guy's such a fucking asshole. Uh, why did he say that? Because because he's a fucking asshole. Why did? Oh my god! Why do assholes always say that? When you get in one of those kinds of loops like that, if you go, I'm I'm thought looping on this because I'm worried that they're right. 
all of a sudden, your brain goes, I just wanted you to acknowledge that. You don't even need to agree with it. You don't even need to think it's true. You don't need to spend any time dwelling on it. Your brain is just hitting you going, acknowledge this. I am giving you a feel. Will you look at it? Good God, I'm trying to keep you safe. So if you can get big for a second, look at yourself and go, oh, well, you're freaked out because like, this is a big deal. This is a huge life change. There's a lot of change happening in a very short period of time. That's why I'm feeling that way. And all of a sudden your brain goes, see, I just wanted you to acknowledge that. And all of a sudden brain starts working again. It's not a magic wand. It doesn't do that every time, but you'd be surprised how often that works. Especially if you say it out loud. If you just acknowledge whatever emotion you're having. I'm anxious right now. I'm pissed. I'm frustrated. I'm scared. If you just like say those things and if you can identify whatever filter you're putting on the stimulus that is causing that emotion, your brain goes, I just wanted you on the team, man. As long as you, as long as this is on your radar, I'll stop bugging you about it. Questions? Oh, uh, a shortcut. This one is like a biohack. The way that you can get bigger than yourself, no, like any uh, emotional state that you're in. Remember an emotional state, we talked about this on day one. Uh, it, an emotional state isn't an emotion. Uh, an emotional state is a particular cocktail of chemicals like in your body. Um, so like feeling anxious, that is like, ah, I have a, a lot of this cortisol hormone, and I have not so much of um, this uh, uh, dopamine hormone. So like some particular balance of those is called an emotional state. No matter what emotional state you're in, you can get bigger with three deep breaths. It sounds woo, it's not. Um, getting a huge hit of oxygen like that lets you start looking at yourself objectively. You'll still be in that emotional state. That doesn't change, but you can go, man, I am panicking right now, aren't I? This is why meditation works. This is why like, uh, basically every religion since like we started having religions, like focuses so much on breathing. Three deep breaths. Uh, is enough to short circuit an amygdala hijack. Those kinds of like uh, awful thought cycles and stuff. Amygdala. It's called an amygdala hijack. Take three huge breaths, stops it. Questions? Starting feels fast, finishing is fast. Multitasking is a myth. All we do is serial single task and we'll get more done if we reduce our work in progress. There's an even an entire project management philosophy around this called Kanban that we'll talk about. Um, do fewer things. Doesn't necessarily need to be one thing. Uh, I like, I'm always kind of working on a project and then I uh, spend half of my day uh, looking at like uh, reading, um, addressing feedback. And we try to like group this stuff. So if you're gonna like crank through uh, submission from feedback, like have a particular time where you're doing that because otherwise you end up with super high whip bouncing back and forth. 
And the reason that we don't want to bounce back and forth, reestablishing context is not free. It's super expensive. That's why you read all those things about a, like, uh, every time you interrupt a developer, it takes them three hours to get back to where they were, or like, punctuating your day with just meeting after meeting after meeting doesn't let you focus. This, this is all the same stuff. Working at 100% utilization feels fast. Giving yourself slack, headroom, it's like keeping your, uh, your RPMs reasonable. You can burst up really quickly to 100% utilization. You can only do that if you have the slack to begin with. So if you're not getting anything done, it might not be that you're not working hard enough. It's probably the case that you're working too hard. And so reducing utilization increases output. And increasing output is the part that actually matters. Finishing is fast, even though starting feels fast. If you focus on things that are outside of your locus of control, like whether you have green check marks or red X's, or whether or not you finish the program, or uh, how good a dev you're gonna be, or all these things that you don't control, you're gonna have a bad time. If you focus on things that you can control that reliably lead to the outcomes that you want, you're gonna have a much better chance of realizing those outcomes. Old man Coberly already told you, you're good enough and smart enough. Now, for you to like close the loop on that, if you focus on the things that you can control, you'll get there. Promise it. You start panicking, three deep breaths. That'll stop your amygdala hijack. These aren't bad. Your amygdala is trying to keep you safe. It's sensing a threat to yourself and is putting your body on alert to try to keep you alive. Three deep breaths. Let's big you look at little you so big you can make some more objective decisions about what needs to be done. Doorbells. Figure out where your doorbells are. We talked about two really common ones. Absent-mindedly reading the same thing twice. Doorbell. Uh, trying to fix a problem by doing the same thing that caused the problem. Doorbell. So what's the, what's the Kyle recommendation for being able to put your paintbrush down? You know, mm. art is never truly finished. Oh yeah. So when we're talking about uh, creating an app, what's your two cents on that? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. So that was going to be the original point of this, but I kind of like where we went instead. That's what the definition of done is for. Um, so the definition of done is how do we know that we're finished with something? And there's three categories, functional requirements, non-functional requirements, and quality. So this is, what is the feature supposed to do? So being really explicit about that, that's a functional requirement. Um, if you can capture that in terms of tests, now we're talking. If we can pass all these tests, we know we've met the functional requirements. Non-functional requirements are things like uh, speed, security, accessibility. So um, non-functional doesn't mean that they're non-measurable. Things like, can it pass the wave accessibility thing? Um, can it load in under a second? Those are non-functional requirements. And then quality is, do we have confidence that it does both of these things? That's things like types, tests, um, metrics. Quality gives us confidence that we actually met these requirements. And so this has some ideas for things that you could use for um, uh, acceptance criteria for this. And they're usually tied to stories. Remember acceptance criteria is a part of a story. It's how you know a story is done. As a flyer, I want to view my past trips so I can find out how much LTA I can claim. So if you can do those two things, then we say, all right, uh, this is done. Assuming that it also met all of our non-functional requirements. 
And these are like, this is a pretty realistic list. So like your student projects probably have a definition of done that kind of look like this. Um, if it's like mission critical, like lives are on the line, eh, you probably have a more stringent one. If, now nah, we know what we're doing, uh, we know what stuff works and doesn't work, and we go somewhere in between. So with those, that combined with user stories is one of the ways that you work on uh, walking away from something. Because if you leave it open-ended to where like, oh yeah, we could just keep slapping uh, features onto this project over and over and over again, you go, all right, well, let me take a look at that production website. Uh, I'm going to pull up Lauren's because I th think you've still got. All right, so we've got our definition of done over here. So all of those were part of the definition of done for this, and it needed to have multiple pages, an API integration, and a form. So uh, Lauren was using the, um, I forget which one, Superhero API maybe? All right, so we've got like all these uh, superheroes and stuff over there. So if I'm trying to figure out how do I do something, how do I bound this? Like, okay, I'm using the superhero API, so that's my API integration. It needs to have more than one page. So I might think a user story for that could be, I need to be able to list a bunch of superheroes and I need to be able to look at an individual superhero. So that's multiple pages. That needs to have a form, something that collects user data. So maybe that's a search. So I can see a list of um, superheroes. As a user, uh, I can view a list of superheroes. As a user, I can uh, see details about a single superhero. And then I need a form. Um, as a user, I can search for a superhero. Three features. So then you figure out what are the acceptance criteria for that. If I go to this page, uh, I see uh, 10 superheroes show up. If I click on one of them, I see more details about that particular superhero. If I have 10 superheroes on the page and I uh, search for Batman in the form, uh, it takes me to Batman's page. Okay, so now I've got those three stories. When those are done, put down your fucking paintbrush. And how do I know that they're that they're like done, done? They do all of those. If you leave it open-ended, I'm gonna make a website about superheroes. Oh, you're gonna be working on that for the next year. You know, it's funny, I was just talking to Matt because I'm an obsessive doer. Like, I can't stop once I start something. I won't go to look at submissions because I'm, like, zoned in. Mm -hmm. um, and oddly enough, this garden that I can't stand is what has forced me to, and it's been the biggest help. Um, and then the past two days, they've just been, like, crazy stressful. And so I haven't been out there. And I could feel, like, I was getting panicky during this, knowing, like, I'm doing that right now, yeah. staring at the screen. And still looking, like while you were talking, I started, and I just like quickly stopped. So after this, we're gonna walk outside. But yeah. it's that's what kind of getting through that with my production website was super simple. Yeah. Um, not in my head, but it's like I met exactly the requirement, and I felt okay about it. I was like, okay, it's done. You know, turn that shit in. Stop messing with it. But um, it's hard to to make yourself stop. So I just found something else to obsess over, and it's great. Uh, something that's not programming yes okay so here's julie's Sorry. like <laughs> how dope is this that's exactly what i was talking about this kills but it was like i felt like i, I started off thinking i'm going to add links i'm going to go to another api and all that and then i laughed at myself and said you know it's a i'm not going to get extra credit <laughs> no this is exactly what I was looking for out of this. So, yeah, to keep you, yourself from going to, 
uh, to keep yourself from going too nuts, use those user stories to create some bounding around this. Yeah, I'm going to now. Like when I saw that, that, that was it. Like tell yourself what you need to get done right now and yeah. don't look at anything else that you want to do. Yeah, and I think I, I told you all the story before about when my wife was looking over my website and she looked at, she's like, what's the rubric? Because I told her what else I was planning on doing. She goes, what's in the rubric? And I showed her and she's like, but you're already done. And I'm like, yeah, but I was going to do this more. She's like, why? Why? Don't you have more work to do? I'm like, yeah, I do. So I needed that. I needed that kick in the butt, though, because otherwise yeah. I probably would still be working on it. Like, th this all seems simple. And, like, it's simple. That's not the same thing as being easy. And it's also not the same thing as being intuitive. Like, all of us were raised with, like, the opposite of these values, just culturally. This is part of the brain rewiring. This is how we become effective software engineers. And in the process, we can also let go of a lot of like stress in our lives too. While getting more done, weird. And just imagine that every feature you want to add is something that like cost money. Yeah. And you haven't, you haven't been authorized to do that. So 100%. just do what's there. Cause yeah, I like gold plating and adding all those extra features. That's also, if you think about the opportunity cost, that means you're choosing not to work on more content. You're choosing not to work on a different project. And that is like extremely real in software. Um, is that like we, we're constantly, we will always, always, always have more features that we could add to something than there will ever be time to implement. So we have to prioritize. Meet the success criteria, move on with your life, man. Have fun with it. Like it should also bring you some joy. But, uh, like, I, I love how Brad put that. Think of each feature, each, like, user story is costing money. And, like, yo, you got a pretty small budget for this. Well, and it actually does cost money. It's like billable hours, yes. right? If you're working on that, like, someone's yeah. paying you to do that. Um, and you are probably need to be paid to do something else at this point. Exactly. One place that's always good to start, like for my production website, I did the same thing that Matt was doing. I was spinning my wheels because I wanted to do too many things. So rather than doing that first and then backtracking, I actually just went to my buddy and I said, this is the API I want to use. These are my requirements. What do you think? And he essentially laid out my entire page. I owe my entire page to my buddy, Dan, because it was his idea. Um, I could have gotten there, maybe, but I saved a whole bunch of time because I used an outside resource that doesn't have all these mental maps and models they're trying to run through and just did a simple in and out. Love it. it. Perfect. Cool. So hopefully this gives you a couple more tools in the toolbox. Um, be kind to yourself. If you're not able to do every single one of these perfectly the first time, they're skills. We have to spend time learning them just like anything else. But that stuff will help reduce your anxiety, push you forward, speed you up. Cool. Go learn something.